what's up guys, Gave Productions here. So for this latest season of the National Steps Challenge, which is Season 6, we have new step trackers. Uh, the one that I got my hands on to use is the Extro Fit 3. And while in previous years you may actually just choose to use your smartwatch because it is a more advanced step tracker and watch in general, uh, this year you may actually have to use this season's step tracker in order to fully participate in the challenge. But before I get into that, uh, let's talk about the step trackers features and let's go over the review first. Alright, so here we are season 6 of the National Steps Challenge and as with all new seasons, we usually have new step trackers that you, Singaporeans and permanent residents can collect. This season we have two new trackers, the Exa Tempo 4C, which is an updated version of the Tempo 3C which I have over here from previous season. Uh, I also did a review on that so do check it out if you are interested. The second tracker we get this season is the Extra Fit 3, which is also an updated version of the Fit 2 from last season. Now last season, both fitness trackers were this long rectangular shape kind of step tracker, which has historically been the main shape of all previous season step trackers, with the exception of the one or two round ones that we had in the early seasons. But this year we moved to a new shape, a square one, kind of like an Apple Watch. Now I don't want to say that it is a copy of the Apple Watch, but they may have gotten some inspiration. And to that I say, I think it's great. This square design at first glance makes it look more like a watch as compared to a standard step tracker. It's also better for a full analog watch face as compared to a rectangular faced step tracker. Do take note though, I will be comparing the Fit 3 to the Tempo 3C and not to the Fit 2 because I never got my hands on the Fit 2. But if I'm not wrong, both the Fit 3 and Tempo 4C have the same feature sets, just as how the Fit 2 and Tempo 3C had the same feature sets as well. So spec-wise, the fitness tracker doesn't look very impressive on paper, but that doesn't really matter because it is just a step tracker with limited function. It has a 200mAh battery which seems small but it is quite decent for a tracker of this size, and it does say that it can last about 5-7 to seven days of usage and I did find it to be quite true. It does come with a USB-A uh, charging cable with a magnetic dock on one end for you to charge your watch. The watch weighs about 38 grams which is pretty light. Spec wise even though this doesn't really matter, it has a Bluetooth 4.0 which is fine because it doesn't really matter in this case as it is just a standard step tracker. Um, and it requires Android 6 or iOS 10 and above for it to pair to your phone. The step tracker is water resistant, however um, they did not give a specific IP rating for how water resistant it is, so definitely don't shower or go swimming with it. I think it is just good for the everyday use such as washing hands or washing the dishes, uh, but definitely do not submerge the tracker in water as water may get in. The Extra Fit 3 basically has all the features of the Exa Tempo 3C and more. It has the ability to track your steps obviously, uh, the ability to tell time, and a heart rate monitor. What is new this year is the addition of a blood oxygen monitor and sleep tracking. I'll get into more info about those two features in a second. In terms of step tracking, it's pretty much similar to that of last year's trackers. I found it to usually undercount my steps in comparison to my Galaxy Watch 4 Classic which has an almost identical uh, step count as my Watch Active 2. The Tempo 3C also did undercount next to my Galaxy Watch Active 2. Comparing the Tempo 3C to the Fit 3, uh, they are almost identical with a few steps difference. So I will say that not much has changed in the step tracking department between past generation and the current generation step trackers. In terms of heart rate monitoring, I need to mention that you can only view your heart rate when you activate workout mode and there is no way to actually just measure your heart rate uh, in the watch. So that is exactly what I did and I found it to be identical to that of my Galaxy Watch 4 which means that it should be pretty accurate. Now for the two new features, let's go over them one by one. Firstly, the blood oxygen monitoring. Uh, this isn't a new part of this season's challenge because I don't think that there was really any way to make this a challenge. So my guess is that this feature here is part of the government's initiative of getting people to check their blood oxygen level uh, periodically because apparently low blood oxygen is a symptom uh, of COVID-19 uh, for people who are asymptomatic. Of course, low blood oxygen also does exist in people who do have symptoms of COVID-19, but it's just one way to you know, kind of test yourself if you may be an asymptomatic case of COVID-19. 
This is kind of like the free oximeter that every household was entitled to a few months ago. I did do a video on that too, so do check that one out. In terms of how accurate it is, I found that it tended to read about 1% more than the oximeter, but I'm not so sure whether it's because it's rounding up because the oximeter gives you up to two decimal places, so like 97.78%, while the step tracker only gives you whole numbers like 98%. So it is possible that the step tracker is just rounding up from 97 point something percent to 98%. But I think it works alright, and so if you do get to 95% or below, then maybe you should consider doing an ART test or, you know, seeing a doctor. The next new feature I want to talk about is the sleep tracking. The sleep tracking is pretty basic. Uh, it doesn't really tell you much other than the number of hours you slept. Uh, it is also an automatic feature and you cannot activate it manually. So it definitely isn't as advanced as most other smartwatches out there uh, that do sleep tracking like my Galaxy Watch 4 or the Apple Watch. Um, you know, which do give breakdowns of your sleep cycle. But I think that's fine because the purpose of this sleep tracking feature is actually really for just the challenge. The one new thing for the National Steps Challenge this season is the inclusion of hours slept on top of your standard steps to hit and your MVPA time. Essentially, the challenge wants you to hit 7 hours of sleep a day in order to get 25 points, which I think is quite generous for people who do sleep 7 hours or more every night. The catch with this challenge though is that it only works with the two new fitness trackers that are provided by the health promotion board. It does not work with any other smartwatch even if they do sleep tracking like my Galaxy Watch 4. My guess is because this has something to do with the complicated process of having to get companies like Samsung and Apple to give up your personal data in the form of sleep data to the health promotion board for this challenge. And all that is very complicated so I do get it. It is unfortunate because I think most people who own a smartwatch probably don't want to wear two watches, so I think most people would just end up foregoing the sleep challenge anyways. Uh, of course, there is a way around that, uh, but it does add a layer of inconvenience to your life. Basically, you just have to, you know, when you want to sleep, you have to pair the step tracker to your phone, and then when you wake up, you have to pair it back to your watch, and vice versa. It can get quite confusing, and it is pretty inconvenient. So apart from these two new features and the standard step tracking and MVPA time tracking, I think it is a decent upgrade over last year's trackers for sure. It has a bigger display, although I don't think it is any brighter than last year's. It does have more features. Uh, oh, and it has interchangeable bands, um, which are you know, 20 millimeter. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, they're 20 millimeter in nature. I think I tried to use my Galaxy Watch 4 straps with this and they do work. So you know, you can attach a leather strap to it for no particular reason, uh, but that's cool. Um, before I do conclude, I do want to point out that uh, there was one particular thing that was quite annoying about the step tracker, and that is the lack of inclusion of the race to wake function that is pretty much standard on every smartwatch this uh, day and age. I do understand that this was probably a cost-saving feature, but hey, you know, it is a free step tracker, so I'm not complaining. Uh, I'm just saying that it would have been a nice to have. So, let's conclude here. The question is, should you pick one up for yourself? I think that if you do have a smartwatch uh, or past season trackers and you don't really care about the sleep challenge, uh, then no. Save the environment, don't add on to the e-waste if you're going to not end up using it anyways. If you care about the sleep challenge and you want those extra points, or your past season trackers are broken, or you don't have a watch, and you want a free watch, uh, although this isn't really a good watch since there isn't a race to wait, uh, then go ahead. I think you should definitely get yourself this tracker or the Exa Tempo 4C tracker. Uh, I don't think you get to choose, uh, but they are both free, so I think whichever you get should be pretty good. Uh, all you have to do is register on the Health Promotion Board website or through your Healthy365 app uh, and you're done. You can go ahead and book a session to collect this free step tracker. Anyways, that is all for this video. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't upload this sooner because I actually just finished my final exams and I also got my hands on this step tracker pretty late, uh, around early or mid-November, so I didn't really have the time to test it and review it uh, until just recently. Uh, but all that being said, that's been it. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't and share this video if you found it useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.